Hi folks and <clears throat> welcome back for another short video uh, this afternoon. Anyway, uh, this is all about the, um, the Hartley oscillator that I showed you about a week ago. And what we've done is um, we've, we've uh, given it a few vitamins, high protein diet and a few steroids and uh, we've beefed it up a bit. This is all a bit of experimentation and uh, I think uh, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's quite funny actually because it's um it looks a lot different and uh, it uh, it's got a bit more power. Uh, I wouldn't say it's got a massive amount, but uh, I'll tell you all about that in a minute. Anyway, let's go and have a quick look at it. Right, <clears throat> here we go, and as you can see, it uh, is radically different from what it used to be. Uh, and as you well, the main obvious the obvious thing is that. Uh, the two little triodes are gone and we've replaced it with a GU48, which is actually the equivalent of a 833A, big Russian triode. And I thought I would um, see if I could get this thing to oscillate. I wasn't 100% sure if it was actually going to work, uh, but it does. It does oscillate and it does actually work. And uh, what we've done is beefed up a few components here so you can see the, the the decoupling capacitor off the rf choke there uh we've beefed that up that's a 30 kv one and <clears throat> you can see there's a little filter there that was actually a bit of an experiment which uh to be honest with you didn't really work it was a low pass filter to try and clean up <clears throat> the output of this and i was looking on the spectrum analyzer and actually the output's actually better when you use the coupling coil and the capacitor, it sort of tunes a, a lot of the harmonics out. Uh, and that low pass filter, I mean, it improved things, but um, wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. There was a big spike at 21 megs, so for some reason it wasn't filtering everything out. Uh, so what else have we done? There's also another big capacitor down there. That's also a high voltage capacitor, which couples the uh, anode to the... Uh, coil the uh the grid leak and the other capacitor there which is like 250 puff are more or less the same i did try with a higher grid leak resistor and it uh didn't work so well so i've kept the original grid leak uh arrangement there and apart from that it is more or less the same same capacitors uh and that's the 833a or gu48 so at the moment, uh, we've got this connected up to the power supply. Uh, the other thing I had to do as well, by the way, folks, was obviously I had to put that transformer there. That's the filament transformer. And uh, the, we are, we're keying it via the center tap of that filament transformer because this is a, that is a directly heated uh, cathode filament. So in order to key it, you have to key it uh, through the uh, center tap. And I've got a 10 ohm resistor there as well. So uh, that's how we're uh, that's how we're keying this. Uh, what else? The power supply. So this is the power supply I have been using. I've just uh, increased the tapping on the power transformer there so we can get a bit more voltage out of it. Because originally we were only using it at about 300 volts for those little triodes. So I'm actually uh, I'm actually running it at a voltage of about 600 volts on the uh, anode I could potentially go even higher and what I could do which I might try a bit later actually is run it at uh, off this big enormous power supply here which will do uh, up to um, almost 3 kV but I'm not going to run it at 3 kV I can adjust it to about a thousand volts or 1200 see what it sounds like the only problem with this is that as you increase the anode voltage, it starts to get a little bit uh, unstable. So at the moment, uh, imagine to get about 10 watts out of this. Uh, probably a bit, actually a bit more. If I crank the voltage up with the Variac, then we get a bit more. Uh, but as soon as you start going too mad with the HT, the oscillator starts to, it oscillates, but the keying is a bit, you know, is less than perfect. 
So it's everything's a bit of a trade off with something like this. It's it's simple it's simple circuit, uh, but it but it does work. And you know obviously, you know the the the, the harder you push it, uh, the uh, the more problems you you get because it's not um, you're not really supposed to use uh, an enormous triode like this in a in a Harley oscillator. Um, it's probably uh, being a bit enthusiastic, but anyway. We've done it, and it uh, it works. I'll give you a, a little quick demo and show you how much power we get out of this. Right, guys. Uh, so I turned everything on. This thing uh, is, is a bit of a death trap, so um, don't try this at home. We've got uh, 700 volts there on the anode, and it, the power supply uh, it does sag quite a lot. So let's key it. So it drops by 100 volts, or 70 odd volts, I should say. There is a bit of a rough tone. I think there's a bit of AC, AC or RF on the uh, on, on the note there, but I think that's more due to the fact that um, we're going into the dummy load and it tends to get a bit of RF going into the receiver, so that's probably why that is. When I connect it to the aerial when everything's grounded, it doesn't sound too bad. So let's just key it again, let's move that cable out of the way. The uh, the work desk is a little bit uh, a bit cluttered at the moment. Right, let's key it. So you go about 10 watts there. I could I could uh, I could get more power out of it obviously. But uh, again, it's um the keying starts to get a little bit uh, a bit flaky and my power supply well this one here that I've got uh, is probably not really that good for this uh, I've measured the, um, the the cathode current by measuring the voltage across that 10 ohm resistor there and it's about it's about a hundred uh, milliamps or just over 100, 120 130 milliamps with this setup at the moment now this um, this GU48 it's quite capable of when it's going at full tilt um you know with something like two two to two to three kv on the anode will actually pass about anything up to you know almost half an amp um in terms of anode current and so uh we're not we're not we're not gonna try that i think um it could be a little bit dangerous i think and i don't think it's gonna sound too good but uh, it is possible to use such a big triode, and you know if you don't push it too much, you know you get quite a bit. You get certainly get a bit more power out of the uh, oscillator than we did before. And ten watts is certainly a bit more useful than two watts. Uh, I think you'd agree. So there we go. That is my Hartley oscillator on steroids, and uh, quite a nice little experiment there. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you again next time.